you know? I mean, some of the most peaceful, peaceful people is, if you've ever watched those movies and they've got, like, some beach bum who's, like, living in a hut down by the beach and, you know, down on the sand, all he has to do is get out of his hut and he goes and goes surf or whatever and he just catches a fish. And, you know, he has, like, no cell phone and that type of stuff, but he's in peace. Why? Because he's living in a paradise. And when we do things God's way, I'm not saying you're going to have a huge house or anything like that. What I am saying is that that God's going to take care of all that. You're going to be living in a peaceful paradise of God's provision. You guys have to forgive me. My, my voice is a little bleh. Um, but our live verse for this whole series, and this is something you're going to hear over the next few weeks, is 2 Corinthians 8, 7. Um, since you excel in so many ways, in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love from, from us, uh, I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. Um, how do we excel in this gracious act of giving? Uh, especially if our finances are a wreck and for some of you who don't even make any money because you're lazy and you won't get a job. Um, and that's a lot of you in here. Uh, during the course of this series, we're going to use this analogy of a ladder to represent movement from, you know, kind of one rung to another. And the first thing before we can even get a ladder, which is what we're talking about tonight, is the fact that you have to realize it's not yours to begin with. Um, the money that I, that Abby and I make, it's not our money, it's God's. Plain and simple. And, um, you know, I, I'm not going to tell you how much, you know, we give or whatnot, but I, I will tell you this, that when finances get tight for us, Abby and I, we actually tend to give more. Um, because the way we look at it is, 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 you know, God, look, we have no clue what we're doing. All right, I mean, we're, we've, we've been married, you know, not very long. And, um. And it's, it's a whole growing and stretching process for us. And, and with that being said, we go into it, and every day and every paycheck, you know, we're like, crap, we messed up again. You know, dadgummit. You know, we, we, you know, we slipped, or we did this, or we shouldn't have done this, or whatever. And, um, but one thing I know is that the very first thing we do is we give that 10% back to God. And plus, we, we normally give more. And, and at least for me, my way of thinking is this, God, you're a whole lot better with money than I am. You're a whole lot better managing my life than I am. And I've given you control over my life. I've given you control over my finances, all this kind of stuff. So I'm going to sow into you. And uh, I'm going to plant my seeds of my finances. I'm going to plant all this stuff that I have. I'm going to plant it in, in a fertile ground of your provision. And uh, provision means, you know, God providing for us. And, um, and, and I promise you, guys, I mean, our electricity is still on, okay? Um, you know, I mean, we... We, we had peanut butter and jelly today. You know, crunchy peanut. I've never had crunchy peanut butter. I still haven't made up my mind about it. But, you know, I was able to eat lunch today. And, uh, you know, less than a year ago, somebody gave us a nice boat. And uh, it's sitting in my driveway. And every day I can walk out there and I can say, God gave me a boat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of you guys were there whenever it happened. And, and, and I don't tell you that to brag that I have a boat, but it's a cool boat. Um, I tell you that because the fact that, you know, because I realize that it's not my money. Because Abby realizes it's not her money. God's going to take care of us. We got an amazing deal on our house. Amazing deal on our house. And it's because that we trust God with our finances. We trust God with our money. We trust God with our life. And it's not just money. But so many times, and, and, and I'm closing with this, and, and I know this is, you know, tonight was a little bit different. And, and like I said, throughout this whole series, we're going to fill it out a little bit. But I know that, you know, we trust God with our life. We trust God with every aspect of who we are and what we do. And God takes care of us in every way. And that's an amazing place to be. You know, um, I, I grew up, and there were seasons in, in my family's life when we had, like, I remember we lived out on the farm, and we actually had to get, like, those igloo orange, you know, um, water jugs. And we had to drive, like, 15 miles into town in order to get drinking water because the water that came out of the well where our house was was not fit to drink. I'm like, it would literally come out brown out of the faucets, you know. And we, you know, some people live paycheck to paycheck. We were living, like, day to day. We were peddling watermelons on the side of the road. We didn't know how we were going to – I mean, it was, it was a tough time financially. And then there was other times when, you know, I mean, my parents were fortunate enough at one point in their life to build like a 6,400 square foot house, okay? And they had a TV that was so big, they had to bring the TV in in two parts before they finished the house because it was that big. Yeah, it was, <laughs> I love that TV. Um, 
you know, so, I mean, my family has ups and downs, but the one thing that I'm so thankful of is the fact that my family and my parents stayed faithful through it all. On the good times and the bad times, we were always at church, and we always paid our tithes, plain and simple. And right now, my parents are doing pretty good for themselves. You know, they live in a nice house. They live in a nice neighborhood. You know, I mean, they've, you know, they're, they're doing good. And they'd be the first to tell you that it's not, it's not because of anything they could do in their own strength. It's because they trusted God in everything, they, in everything that they had and everything that they did. And that's how I want to model my life. You know, I'm not here sitting here telling you that you're going to drive a Range Rover. One day I will, okay? And that Range Rover might be 30 years old and might have rust and like four unmatching wheels. But I will be kicking it in a Range Rover one day. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that that's all going to come because I trust God with our finances and because we trust God with our lives because none of it belongs to us. None of it belongs to us. And when you see all those commercials on TV telling you you got to have this and you got to have that, and, you know, we've got this age-defying cream and we have this, this Rogaine that's going to make your hair grow back. And, um, I mean, like, I mean, you know, there's P90X and now there's another 90-day plan. And, I mean, like, all this kind of stuff. People just want your money. The world just wants your money. And it's not your money. And it makes it easy. When you realize it's not your money, you don't have to. You can just say, hey, look, I don't have the permission to give my money to that or give my money to this or give my money to that. Because the fact is, is when you put God in control, God's going to take care of everything. Does that make sense tonight? Yes. All right. And, I'm, I, you know, you, you guys know usually I'm, like, walking around sweating and, you know, like spitting at you and, and all that kind of stuff. But um, um, you have to forgive me because tonight I just I took some medicine this morning, and it's still kind of in my system, and I'm still like, Ugh. So, um but I really wanted you guys to understand from my heart where we're at with this thing is, look, over the next the next three weeks, it's going to be about money. And I don't want you guys to check out. I don't want you guys to decide, oh, it's just about money. I don't have a job. I'm going to go someplace else or I'm going to do something else. I want you guys to be here because I promise you the principles that, that we're going to teach you over the next few weeks are principles that you need to have in your life. They're principles that you need to take a hold of. And I promise you that I'm doing a lot of promising, okay? Um, but I can promise this because this is in God's word. I promise if you live your life according to these principles, college, cars, houses, jobs, all that kind of stuff, God's going to take care of you. When we trust God with this, you know, if, if God says, look, you know, Haley, you, you know, you're being faithful with a hundred, two hundred dollars a month or whatever. I don't even know how much you make, whatever that you bring in a month. You know, I've got a promotion in mind for you. I've got another job in store for you where you're going to make more money. And then when you're faithful with that, God's going to promote you to another job. And God's going to promote you to another job where he's going to bring money in. Or he's going to give finances. Um, one quick testimony as we close. When I was getting ready to go to college, um, you know, my, my parents, they were doing okay financially. They weren't doing, you know, tremendous, but they were doing okay. Um, it, I was going to a private Christian college, which was going to be quite a bit of money. Um, and one of the girls in our church, a great girl, I'm still friends with her to this day, um, her parents just financially couldn't afford it, and, and she really felt like she had a call in her life, and my parents felt like God said, hey, look, I want you to take some of this money, and I want you to pay for her college. And so my parents, they talked about it, and they prayed about it, and they said, okay, okay. And that next week, my dad got a raise at his job or a bonus or something like that that covered what her college was going to cost. And her college, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure her college cost more than my college. But it was because my parents were faithful with what God had entrusted with them. And you may not make very much money right now. And you may not even have any money right now. Um, you guys need to learn the value of work. And you need to learn the value of money. And you need to learn the value of being a manager of what God's placed in your life. Because if you do that, God's going to take care of you through all of these economic times and guys we're just beginning to see you know um there's you guys have, if you've even remotely been paying attention to the news there's riots breaking forth in other countries all of those riots are because people are just starving and there there's just not enough food and there's just not enough money and there's just not a lot you know and guys i mean even in wisconsin um you guys heard about like all the teacher strikes and all that kind of stuff that's happening in wisconsin like people are storming the capitol because they're trying to you know they're trying to you know get rid of this collective bargaining agreement with with the union of teachers and all these public employees and all this kind of stuff um which there's two sides to all that but the reason that they're there is because they don't have any more money 
The state government has no more money. And our federal government is printing money. They're just, they're just printing money. You can't print money, people. You know? How many of you wish you had a money tree in your backyard? That'd be kind of nice, wouldn't it? You know? You see something you want, you know, you just go grab a couple hundreds off the tree. Okay? Honestly, that's how our government is acting. It's acting as if money just grows on trees and they can do whatever they want to. And unfortunately, they're probably not going to be the ones that have to deal with the consequences. But it's us that are going to have to deal with the consequences. And that's why you guys have to get a hold of this now. And it's scary stuff. It really is. It's scary stuff. But when you trust in God, it works everything out for your good. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right.